Eagle uplink. Strike team is in position near the terror site. Awaiting confirmation. Solid copy, Big Sky. Strike one has been given the green light. Your highest priority is to protect those civilians. Hey, folks, how y'all doing? This is Con Over coming to you with a game of classic XCOM. Uh, this is the early Iron Man campaign. I know you probably a lot of you probably thought that we've forgotten about this, but uh, I promise you I haven't been. I've just been very, very distracted trying to do things like give you XCOM 2. Uh, that being said, um, I will say that my own computer, when I tried to boot this up, was like, uh-uh. Okay. You are not playing XCOM. Oh wait, there's two sets of, of files. Why is that? I don't know, but there is now. Which led me to some very, very bizarre happenings. One was that we lost about a month's worth of material, so for the last couple of days I've been working my way back uh, to the present with a burning love inside. Uh, but also on top of that, well, other than missing this, Adjusting aim. I've been trying to make sure that I have everything happen exactly as it happened before. Not so much like, you know, play by play, because I can't do that. I'm not, you know, R.A. and Jesus. But, um, I will say that I've managed to do it pretty darn well. Down to research paths and everything, really. I got you. You're safe. Hey, you got you. He's safe. Um... I will say, actually, kind of coming back to this after playing XCOM 2 for so long is uh, kind of a difficult, not so much learning curve, but I don't know what the opposite of learning curve is. If there's an opposite, that this that's what this is. I get the feeling that I want to do something more aggressive, like, let's do a run and gun for seemingly no reason. Let's move you right up here. That's why. You know, that's what happens when you try to be sneaky-ish. But, if this is all we face in this map, I'm okay with that. Like, I'm uber okay with that, in fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops, wrong thing. Um, I do have a number of plasma pistols and plasma shenanigans. Uh, pretty much all over my guys. Because, well, it's frankly way better for me to have it. Double shot on, uh, this bro. I get the feeling we're going to be facing a lot of zombies in this one. But, you know, oh well. It's kind of how it is. Actually, if I move you right here, that should put us in a better spot for next turn. And you still get a shot at this bro. You're not going to kill him, but you'll wound him. Oh wow, unless you decide not to even shoot at him at all. Huh. Yep, tons and tons of zombies. Oh, that, that was um, a little bit cheeky. And of course, the dude's in the air. Ah, but that's okay, because what we're going to be doing this coming turn is blowing a hole through a lot of them. Oh, he just kind of came inside, didn't he? Hmm. That seems a little confusing as to why he did that. But, as they say, do not interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake. So let's see, what to do first? I think a Shredder Rocket to open up all negotiations would be a good, a good strong way to start the whole process. In theory, let's try not to kill the, the Civi. Which is a hard bit to swallow, apparently. So you know what I'll do instead? I will just put a rocket right in the middle of the cafe. Uh, I'll pipe below the back walls, which is good because there's at least one chrysalid back there. And I don't think I can destroy the corpses before they become zombies, so I might as well just do this. I never liked this bar anyway. Okie dokie, so now what? I think next we're going to start off with a nice little double shot. Pop, pop, bang, bang. And of course, that's the thing she crits like crazy. Yeah, double shot, who cares? Okay, if you crit this, oh cool, yay, Molita! Death! Now, Game Guru, I do believe, dear sir, that you are going to take a nice little shot right here, and you better hit. Dude, that's, that that's unacceptable. I mean, there's, there's really no other term for it, it's just, it's unacceptable. I am ready to go. I look to you to be a shining example of who my troops are supposed to be. 
And if you can't do it, then what's the point of even having you around, man? Jeez. Okay, so this one's open. Ah, and now that I think about it, there's a civilian, not civilian, there is a chrysalid right behind here, behind the arcade games, and those things are stolen enough quarters from people, so I'm gonna get rid of those, hurt the chrysalid, and when he runs towards me, I'm going to have a close combat encounter of the extraterrestrial kind. Or is he gonna go for that civvy? And it's just further proof that you can't blow up the zombies, which is kind of annoying. Nope, he's going over there. Apparently there's a cyber disc in here somewhere, too. Hark, come on. I'm going to lose so many civilians in this one. Well, on the plus side, I'm having all these, like, god-awful shots right now. If we just get all these out in this particular map, I'd be okay with that. I mean, not perfectly. I mean, we're losing a lot of civilians nonetheless, but... I'd be okay with it. Hey! And he even let Joe Schmo over there survive. What a generous individual. Whatever you said, pal. I am not on your side. Oh yeah, there's other dude again. Forgot about that. And somebody up top just randomly died. Maybe it was from fright? Is that what it was? It's like, I can't, I can't take this right now, man. Blech. For you. Show people just one time, just kind of pick up two people at the same time? Yeah, might as well. Okay. Well, more heavy floaters. So I am firmly planting my foot in my mouth. Hmm. Suppression might be a good idea. So I'm going to suppress him, do some damage, hollow target him, which is even better. The good doctor is going to be able to just kind of chill. That's a zombie there. There's still another crystal that's just kind of chilling out in the open someplace. I'm not 100% sure of where he is. 90% chance to crit be a waste to really shoot that close guy. Oh, okay, maybe it's not a waste because my people don't know how to shoot anymore. Grr. 100%. Break open the door. Shoot the guy. You might as well just kill him. So at least one more zombie. And there's at least, what, three heavy floaters up? There's three heavy floaters. Oh, and the chrysalid, too. I forgot about that guy. Oh, no, I did forget about him. So we got five more enemies on the map, and here comes a sixth one being made. Arg. You know... They talk about in this game at the end of it how crystals are basically just like these feral monsters. If that were the case, how did anything else on their planet survive? Think of how quick that gestation period is. Jeez. I think all my guys are pretty much in cover. And watch him just wax the poor civilian who's like right next to him. Oh no, okay. Cool. Oh, there's a rocket. Okay, where are my rockets? Where are my runbacks? Where are my runbacks? Okay, you're gonna shift to the right. Are you, my dear sir, are going to have them enjoy the lovely sounds of Kaboom, the up and coming artist from XCOM's private DJ scene. Sorry, that one got away from me, but at the same time, to realize it's actually kind of cool to be like, hey, look, these guys are being idiots on my side. Fantastic. So we're down two guys. Down two baddies, that is. Probably get rid of this dumb thing. Uh, as Melita puts a laser round just past somebody's ear, because apparently she thinks that's cool. Let's rock. And one of the things, now that I think about it, that I'm really missing 
from the whole XCOM 2 experience is the whole, um, you know, reload without having to worry too much. The whole shtick that's kind of like, okay, well, you can reload for your first and then take a shot with your second, as opposed to reloading completely and totally ending your turn. Why do all zombies have bad posture? It's not a joke, I'm actually just kind of curious. It's like, it has to be like a zombie thing. You cannot be a zombie and have great posture. Also, even better if you could crit and actually kill a guy on one top, one shot, on top. Dead and gone. Hmm. Now, if I move you forward. I can unfortunately not see anybody else. If I move you up, you can reload. Reloading. You can reload as well. You're also moving forward, and you're going to use your, so as of yet, really useless aim to kind of keep an eye on things. That's affirmative. You're moving forward as well. I'm pretty sure, like I said, I'm pretty sure there's a cyber disc somewhere. I could could have heard that <laughs> thing before. That's, um, yeah, that's a problem. Okay, now maybe what I'll do is I will shift. Out. Of a fair Molita over to the side. And she's gonna throw out a battle scanner. Which I actually kinda wonder, I never tested this. I wonder if you can blow open parts of the server of the level and have your battle scanner work that much more effectively. Hmm. So I need to find out, just not right now. You're, you're gonna run up here, no matter how much fire you might bring yourself under. Because it's time for us to start, actually start saving people. I'd really prefer to not have just a bunch of corpses all over the place. I'm old fashioned like that. I'm on the move. So probably no better sight lines, but at least you can keep an overwatch on that side of things. Does this count? I always forget. Like I said, it's been such a long time since I played this game that I cannot honestly tell you what is a good rescue and what isn't. But this one looks good. Go, you're safe. Go. I'm ready to move. Another thing about it too, this is in Port Said, um, Egypt, which not to cast dispersions, but over a number of playthroughs, it always seems to be in Egypt. So I don't know if they're making some sort of political comment about Egypt or what it is, but it's it's an god awful. I feel so bad for them. Hey, look, someone actually hit on Overwatch. How how fantastic is that? Never mind, it's fair with those. Like I said, fair with those proving that the more things change, the more they stay the same. Hey, and the flames went out around this delivery truck. It is now an open a la carte delivery truck. As for you, that's called a gift wrap kill right there, that is. Nailed him. Well done. Okay. Now. Moving. If you move up. Cool. And then you move up. Not quite as cool. I'm guessing guys are like right there, but at the same time I can't see them, and if I can't see them, I can't shoot them, now can I? I am moving out. However, Zhang is going to move over here to the side, so next turn he's going to chance to throw a rocket around the corner. And that should be so much fun to watch. You can do that. You no need to ask twice. are going to rescue You're good to go. this ranger and jump through the window. Okay, or kick it down, that works too. But a lot much more impressive, a lot much more. A lot more impressive had you just broken the window down by just like leaping through it like a, you know, a boss. I'm fair that's gonna play Tom Arnold for a second. The cover of this lamppost keeps me safe. 
Don't tell me these guys are up on the roof. Are these guys up on the roof? Okay, because they're not over there. The last burrow over there. Come on. Show me the roof. Show me the roof. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Like I said, I'm getting used to so much graphical... Oh, never mind. I'm getting so used to graphical things from XCOM 2 that XCOM 1 is starting to throw me again. It doesn't take away from it being a fantastic game. It's still a hugely fantastic game. It's just one of those moments where you're like, I don't know how to feel about this. Okay, now Shang's turn to move over here to the lamppost of death. And what might end up happening next turn is Captain Amazing, or maybe Jane Farstrad is going to run up to the top of this ladder and go exploring. We have enough guys over here too. Yeah, that was totally a cyber disc. Oh, come on, bro. How'd they get behind me? Arg. But you know what? They're behind me, which means I'm going to have to be a little bit safe-ish. Not entirely safe, because it doesn't seem to be the watchword of this particular run-through. Okay, so these guys are definitely upstairs. Or, at least, debatably not on the crowd floor. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? All right, screw this. Running gun, you're going here. <laughs> Sucka, lighting reflexes. Now, the only bad thing about this is that I'm not sure I can put a rocket in there. That's not going to hurt my guys. But we'll give it a try, shall we? Yeah. So blaster launchers are great with some things, but honestly... Um, since they can't miss, and while a shredder rocket, I don't think really would destroy the cover. Uh, the blaster launcher shredder rocket will destroy cover, as well as uh, put you guys out into the wide open for everyone to shoot, which is a wee bit of an issue. Eighty-four percent, kachow, kachow. And once more, huzzah! Boink. Now you should hopefully die. Fantastic. Oh, wow, okay. I'm not sure I would necessarily call it a success, but 8 out of 18, I guess, isn't too, too bad. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for checking in on this particular mission. I'm going to see you guys back at base in just a second. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Sacred Hydra, there were more than seven heads here, but we were able to take them down. So, right, I'll see you back at base. Give me one moment. Hey, hey, and we got two colonels now that are both supports. So, screw that. Savior it is. All right, let's see what's left. Okay, so we got this stuff, not too great, blah, blah, blah. And we successfully stopped the Remember terror attack. Fantastic. Will be so I'm building the one last um, satellite now that Annette was somehow involved in the to toss over Egypt over here. Her limited memories of the event include details that no one outside of our organization could possibly know. But the question remains... What is it about her that makes her so valuable to the aliens? Okay, so see down over here, we have a power journey coming up in four days. So a council report in six, EMP cans, though tons of kind of like a little, some research, some uh, actual manufacturing. We're actually building the power generator so that way we can actually go and afford um, to have the power for the hyperspace relief relay business. Power generator complete. And I think it's just a tad bit to be honest so far. Yeah, 175. So that'd be fine, because in just a second, when we have the council report, uh, we're going to toss money at it then. Should be a B? Just because of one stupid ex Oh, whatever. Whatever. Seven scientists, five engineers. I'm like swimming in troops this time around. only mark the beginning of an enduring effort to eliminate the extraterrestrial threat. 
Okay, so now we're building the hyperdrive, hyper, not hyperdrive, hyperspace relay, uh, which is good. At the same time, this is good that we have so much money because these things are wicked expensive. And uh, all the other research that we'll be doing is going to be wicked expensive at the same time, too. But EMP cannons, cool, right? Right. Yeah, blah. All right, so plasma cannons or plasma snipers. Plasma cannons actually are ship to ship. And they require tons of weapon fragments. Let's just do a skeleton suit because it's nice and low key. Ooh, even more so. Actually, let's check the foundry real quick, too. Anything really important? Advanced, blah, 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 blah. Sentinel drone, mech close combat, jelly delirium. This is sort of worthwhile, um, mostly because it makes your, uh, like, you know, kinetic strike mod, the KSM, insane damage. At the same time, these things are just so expensive, I just don't know whether or not I want to waste time with them. Sorry about that, guys. I had to run and take care of something real quick. Uh, let's see, advanced server motors, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Screw these. I'm not going to do any of these. Now it's going to basically hurry up and wait. Commander, our satellite is prepped and standing by for launch. We are ready to deploy it on your orders. Say goodbye to alien abductions. Yay! And we get all all in at the same time. How great is that? So we get tons of money, I suppose. Just a little bit of money. And, um, you know, not too bad. The Southern Hemisphere didn't really like us very much, but that's okay. I'll check this real quick. So that's going to be ready in four days. This stuff's all cool. Um, I think I might build one EMP cannon just for giggles. Depending on how expensive it is, of course. But maybe just for giggles. Oh, wow. That's ridiculously cheap. Let's do that. And screw that stuff, and screw all that, and yeah, we have plenty of stuff right now. Say hello to our next bit of research. Skeleton suit, of course. You guys all know what this does. It's a grappling sh uh, grappling suit to go from place to place. I really want to get the plasma sniper, though, so maybe what I'll do is just put ghost armor. And the hyperwave relay is in 11 days. Hey, cool. Wait, so the last portion of Delhuge? Yes, this is. Okay, so guys, this is the last thing of the Furies submissions. We got $100. We got, you know, uh, the people that um, Annette was working around with. Uh, they were apparently in a remote area near the Alps. And cool. So if we get pick up these people, then we get a couple more soldiers and all that kind of good stuff. But we have to do It's one of those rush missions. We look forward to seeing your progress. And honestly, looking how awesome they all look, it's so hard not to be like, okay, we got this, no problem. But all right, guys, uh, when we come back, I will be happy to do this last little uh, of the Furies missions with you. But for the time being, I do have to take a quick break, you know, uh, get a little bit of food in me, get a little rest, you know, sleep, all that kind of good stuff. And I'll see you guys again all soon. So thanks so much for checking out this video series. If you like what you see, comment, subscribe. Uh, we are pretty near 200 if we have not hit it already by the time this video goes up. So thank you so much for the support on this channel, and I'll see you guys all next time. Take it easy, everybody. This is Connor Orick signing off.